Good evening. On tonight's episode of The Tomb of the Cybermen, a Patrick Troughton classic that was lost from the BBC archive for 20 years. Do you understand me? Now that I have released you... Ah! This story begins by following the exploits of a group of archaeologists. They're trying to uncover the last remains of the Cybermen, and they uncover their tomb using explosives. But when one of their members tries to open the door to this ancient tomb, he's electrocuted. The doctor enters with Jamie and Victoria in tow. He feels obligated to follow these archaeologists and prevent them from getting into any trouble. So he helps them open the doors to this tomb. Come on. Wait! Wait! I would be very careful in there if I were you. But why wasn't Togerman killed? Why weren't you killed? The chemistry between Patrick Troughton as the Doctor and Fraser Hines as Jamie is one of the best Doctor Companion team-ups of all who. They were really good friends in real life and you can totally tell that when you watch them on camera. Their real life friendship seeps through onto the film and the two of them, their back and forths is great. Come on, let's go and join them. Come on, Victoria. The amount of vast sets in the story is quite impressive for the budget of the show at the time, and the fact that they're only made out of cheap plywood is disguised by this grainy black and white footage. Look! Sound between limits of 1 and 91, integral into power series, yes, yes! In a moment of absent-minded ignorance, one of these archaeologists decides it's a good idea to turn on all the equipment in this tomb. Now the Doctor has to race through all the catacombs, searching for these explorers who have split up for some of the equipment could cause some serious harm. Perhaps the Cybermen aren't quite as dormant as you imagine. We must find out what's happened to the others. Even Jamie, who's experienced the horror of the Cybermen firsthand, starts randomly jabbing at buttons on this console with no regards for the consequences. And it ends up resulting in the death of this explorer. Jimmy, don't touch that control! I already have. What's the matter, Doctor? Which one was it? Which one was <laughs> These archaeologists should have followed Indy's instructions to short round. Don't touch anything! And don't touch anything. In a finite moment of logic, the group decides to leave the planet and come back at a time where they're better prepared, but the ship has been mysteriously sabotaged, stopping their retreat. Well, whatever it is, it's practically wrecked our chances of getting off this crummy planet. So they all decide, hey, we're stuck here, we might as well further explore these tombs. And while coming across different chambers, inevitably, they find the Cybermen and one of the archaeologists decides to wake them up. He even kills one of his colleagues when the colleague tries to stop him from waking up these monsters. For the last time I'm asking you to keep away from those controls. No! 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 The scene of the Cybermen waking up is tense. They emerge from an impressive three-story set. There's a droning synth and tension-filled music and the slow, gradual movements from the actors portraying the Cybermen as they emerge from this hive is very off-putting. In New Doctor Who, the Cybermen are portrayed as strong and militant. But back here in the Patrick Troughton era, they're, they're more weird and odd and creepy. They have this odd voice effect and they're not necessarily strong or powerful. They're more off-putting and weird. <laughs> Of course, there are many, many serials of Classic Who where the antagonist isn't handled properly and carries no threat or tension. Or it's just 
been in so many serials that it becomes a joke. This happens with a few serials the Cybermen are in, as well as the Daleks. But back here, in this serial, they handle properly. They have this, this aura of violent offness. And the music only enhances these tense scenes. <laughs> For how off-putting and chilling the Cybermen voices are, I did at times find myself struggling to understand what they had just said. My history computer has full details of you. What? We accept. Sorry? Sorry? What? I feel like they could have turned down the voice effect by about 10% at times. Destroyed our first planet, and we were being dead. What? The Cybermen have these little bugs. They're called Cybermats. They're very silly and in no way threatening. The music is on point in this scene, but the felt teeth of the Cybermats doesn't do much to scare me. these things, they're slow as shit! Oh, oh, don't do that crap! Back against the controls, everybody! I think the idea of the Cybermats was good on paper, even though they have a really stupid name, Cybermats. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Yeah, I think the idea of these little creatures was good on paper, but they just didn't have the animatronics or robotics to realise them properly on screen in 1967. Oh no! He's breaking through that styrofoam capsule! Ah! <laughs> Two members of this expedition try to broker a deal with the lead Cybermen but of course he goes back on his word and murders them because he's a Cyberman. Anyway, check out him murdering one of these archaeologists in the scene. The angle and the effect and the editing is all brilliant. <laughs> Toberman is the tank of the expedition. He's the big guy, the muscle, the brute and the Cybermen capture him and partly convert him into a Cyberman. He's on their team for a bit of this story, but after seeing his colleagues murdered, he turns against his new masters, picks up the lead Cyberman and throws him against a console. The practical effects used here 50 years ago still function, in my opinion. I mean, they're dated, but it looks great. <laughs> This four-part story is paced nicely. We get the ominous exploration of the tombs for the first part. We get the tension-filled reveal of the Cyberman halfway through. And towards the end, in the final part, we get some nice action sequences. In the end, Toberman helps the Doctor and Jamie to reseal all of the Cybermen into their tomb. He uses his brute strength to destroy one of these Cybermen with his bare hands. And after he kills it, it starts expelling shaving cream. Because, you know, Cybermen are filled with shaving cream, apparently. In conclusion, this story is a great example of the Patrick Troughton era. The tone is tense and eerie most of the time, and I really love the aesthetics and the voice effect for the Cybermen in this story. I think it's way better than New Who. Once again, Patrick Troughton is great as the Doctor in this story. Fraser Hines is engaging and his chemistry with Troughton is on point. The music is effective and really stands at the forefront of this story a lot of the times. And of course, it's classic Who, so we get some unintentional funny moments that were supposed to be suspenseful, 
but just didn't work and end up being hilarious 50 years later. Great cereal. Great cereal. Probably one of the best Trouton cereals, to be honest. Thank you for watching and really help out if you like, subscribe, and in the comments tell me how I got all the facts wrong and how my opinion is null and void. Thank you and good night.